salvation. This is a call for salvation. If you do not know Jesus, this is a call for salvation. A call for salvation. Respond to the call for salvation. If you don't know the Savior, this is his presentation. It's been two thousand. Hello and welcome to Voices in the Wilderness. I'm your host, Reverend Maria. Friends, Jesus said, go out into every nation of the world and proclaim the good news. That is the goal of Voices in the Wilderness. We hope that our programs will inspire you to draw closer to God because he is the way of the darkness, the way out of the darkness. He is the truth that brings light and he is life itself. Our scripture of the day is Isaiah 45 verse 3. I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I am the Lord who call you by name. I am the God of Israel. Joining us again for part four of this interview are Messianic Rabbi Sef Parat and Pastor Carl Gallops. Rabbi Sev is a founder of Messiah of Israel Ministries. Pastor Carl Gallops is a senior pastor of Hickory Hammock Baptist Church in Milton, Florida. They are anointed authors, preachers, and teachers. These two men of God are on a mission to equip the church for these prophetic times we live in. I encourage you to visit their websites to learn about them and their ministries. Well, welcome back, Rabbi, and welcome back, Thank you. Pastor. Shalom, shalom, Maria. <laughs> shalom, shalom. It's great to be here. Thank you for having us. I mean, we have had some amazing conversations. You know, even off air. Even we've, we've, off we've done whole shows off the air. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I've always been, on, you know, I always end my show on time, except for the last, the last one. I mean, the time just... That was embarrassing when you told me that. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, gosh. No, I mean... We set a record and not a good one. <laughs> I think we kept on speaking when the camera was off. I, I know, <laughs> because we were in such a, uh, yeah. an engaging conversation. Yeah. Because let's face it, the most interesting conversation is about, about Yeshua the Lord. Lord and his yeah. word. I mean, I mean, we can go on for days and yeah. days and days. Well, you know? Yeah, when it's in context and when you're connecting it through the feast of the Lord, knowing that Genesis 1 1 goes all the way through to Revelation 22, when you got all of that, the, the mysteries just keep being revealed. Right. Like Paul said, Behold, I tell you, mystery. Behold, I tell you, another mystery. Behold, I tell you, Christ in you. Behold, I tell you, the rapture. Behold, I tell you. Right. mysteries just come alive. Yeah, and you know, he says yeah. that, that to us, his people, He's going to give us the mysteries, but to them or yeah. the world, yeah. they don't know these yeah. mysteries until right. And you, they, and you think they about uh, the Bible verse that you quoted earlier, also, which is Deuteronomy twenty nine twenty nine. Uh, yeah, the That's mysteries belong. Uh, uh, the secrets, to the secrets Lord. belong to the Lord, but those secrets also are being revealed to yes. us as we get closer. That was given in the time of Moses. They didn't know too much at that That's time. Right. That's right. right. They didn't know what we know today. No. That's That's right. Right. So as we look through the generations, the mystery is being revealed more and more yeah. and more and more. Israel's back in a nation, back as a country. Mm -hmm. That Bible verse has been fulfilled. Then Yeshua came. That Bible verse has been fulfilled. Now there's one more boom left. What's that boom? the return of Yeshua HaMashiach. Amen. And so now we're getting that revelation more and more. Yeah. It doesn't mean in Deuteronomy 29, 29, that God has mysteries that are not going to be revealed. No. no, no, no. He's going to reveal it to us. Yes. In time. In time. We're in that time right yeah. now. Yeah. But but to yeah. those that are that want Only to have... Only with the Ruach HaKodesh. That's the what the Bible Hakodesh. says in the book That's of... That's right, uh, the Holy Spirit. Eyes to see and ears to hear. Amen. In the book of uh, Romans, it says, right, Israel has been blinded in part. Part. It mm -hmm. means that they have some of the revelation. Yes. They're missing the other part of the revelation that can only come through the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit. Right. Yeah. And, you know, you just, I just had that. So the Jews and Gentiles eventually will become the one new man when they accept Ephesians Yeshua, two. you know, the Messiah. Absolutely. And so oh. that's exciting. Although there's 12 gates okay. in the book of Eid Galut, the book of Revelation. That's because... To the new city, yeah. They enter in, right? Yes. But when they enter in, what happens to those 12 gates those 12 tribes what happens they become one in one. messiah yeshua he is the lion of the tribe of yes, yes yes Ali yes Yehuda. that's what it's all about amen yeah. amen uh, this is exciting and this is when he want what he wanted from the beginning to us to be unified in him yes. and it is so sad that of course we know that uh, that the, the division of the church happened the, the first division between you know the the gentiles and the jewish believers and you know after that now we have what like 30,000 yeah. uh, Christian denominations where that wasn't, you know, the intention of the Lord. He wanted us to stay together. But, you know, he has a plan and a purpose. So he says he wants yeah. us to and be one new man. Let me, <laughs> let me give your audience the plan and the purpose 
the big picture, and it's in the scripture. Ephesians 1, 9. Behold, the mystery of God's will has been revealed to us. Yes. That is, he's bringing everything in heaven and everything on earth back together under one head, Jesus yeah. Christ. Now that, that implies, and when you, when you ask the question, is there anything that God doesn't know? No. Oh. God has never gone, oh, I didn't know that, right. which means he knew the sin in the garden was going to happen, right. which means he knew when he breathed into Adam, he would need to be the lamb slain before the foundation mm -hmm. to buy it back himself. Right. Right? But God's not going to reveal that to the an angels or to Satan right. and, and then the fallen ones, the demonic realm. He guards it at the throne until it's ready to be released. Amen. But he knew. So what's God doing? Ephesians chapter 1, verse 9. What's the purpose of life? What's the meaning of life? <laughs> Here it is. Here it is. God knew all this was going to happen. So much of it he allowed. All of it he set in motion. He's using both the righteous and the unrighteous. He, he tells Pharaoh, he says, I harden his heart, and I'm going to use you, my people go, and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, Nebuchadnezzar, he uses Nebuchadnezzar. He uses Darius. He uses Cyrus. He uses Satan. Yes. Starting in the beginning, God could have killed Satan right then. But as God was getting ready to do it, Satan would have said to the angel, See, I told you he was unfair. But instead, God lets him live until the until. time of the end. Mm -hmm. He's already pronounced a death sentence on him. But, he's, but, but he goes, what, what is Satan? He, he's like a, a drill instructor. What are we? We're in boot camp. See, we are not animals. We're not robots. We're not puppets on a string. God doesn't want that in us. He wants, we're in his image. The That's angels right. are in Amen. his image. What does that mean? We can think, we can create. No, we can't speak and create like he can, but right. we can create things. Uh, we can pass on generational knowledge. Yes. Um, we can do all Absolutely. of these things. The, the smartest creature on the earth other than human humanity is a chimpanzee. Mm -hmm. They still swing in trees and eat bananas. Right. We've right. been to the moon and back. Exactly. And we're building internets and communications and cell phones and automobiles. That's amazing. We're like gods to them. Well, yeah, so, well, you so know, we're, we're, we're made in the image of God. Yes, so right. that means that we have his, his DNA, his, you know, and, and we'll talk about that because yeah, that's even it's, fascinating. It's, 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 it's one of your book. books, but, but it's fascinating. Yeah, but the point, I, the point I'm making is, is that God knew all of this. We need to wrap our heads around. Sometimes we make God way too small. Yes. We need to understand he knows it all. His thoughts are like the grains of sand. We yes. can't even count them. So, so he knew from the beginning. So what's he doing? All of this, you know, people will look and say, all oh, this fallen. Well, if there was a God, he wouldn't allow this. Wait a minute. He does, he does allow it. And it's for a purpose. It's for your purpose and my purpose. See, time is God's gift to the world. Time. He didn't, we didn't have to have time. He could have just wiped it all out, started over. He lives outside about it. of time. Yes. He forgot about us. Yes. But instead, he gave us time so that we can decide, are we going to follow the fallen one? Or are we going to follow the Lord God creator. If we follow him, he's got a new paradise coming. Right. And then now all things are made new. No more crying, no more death, no more pain. Uh, right. Our minds are made new, Isaiah right. says. Everything's made new so that now we are with him. We serve as a kingdom of priests yes. forever and ever. Well, what does that mean? Sit around on cloud and play a harp? No, no. that's Greek <laughs> mythology. What we do is we serve him and with him on the face of the earth among the nations that were supposed to have arisen through Adam and Eve in perfection, right. but also, and I'm just going to say this, there was a creation before ours. Yes. Job talks about it. Okay. Now there's this creation. Who's to say God's not going to have other creations? And who's to say we're not going to join in with the angels? Okay, Pastor Carl, now you're going a little bit too, <laughs> too far. I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> no, just kidding. I I just, mean, that's what, it, it could blow our minds when we yes, think it, about it's all it's this. It's supposed stuff. to blow our minds. Yeah. That's what Ephesians 1, 9 says. I know. Is this, I know. He's in Religion the, is not supposed to blow your mind. I this know. is supposed to blow and your mind. And so, <laughs> priest, right. priest, the kingdom of priests, to who and where? The new city comes. There's 12 gates. We've talked about this yes. before. And the Bible is very specific. It says, and those gates are open. They don't even have doors. Yeah. What are the gates? They're portals. Yeah. They're gates. To do what? To go wherever God sends us. Yes. Throughout the universe. Amen. To Amen. do whatever. And we minister alongside with the angels like we were supposed to do from the beginning. But watch. Can angels make decisions and make mistakes? Can angels sin? Yeah, they've done it. That's Satan right. And, and a third of them. All right. So, can humans? Yeah, we're still doing it. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Are there any? Is there any redemption for the fallen angels? No, because they were right at His throne. They were right there. They had and who answers, knows yes. that during their starting to go astray, God wasn't giving them redemption, saying, "Please come back to me," or else. Mm -hmm. wow. And they didn't. So wow. they have no redemption. We, we on the other hand 
come through the line of Adam and Eve, earthly dimension, we have redemption. God gave us time so we could choose. Wow, that's, that's so good. So now we're in the process of choosing. So people curse God at what's happening in the world and in their lives. I've got cancer, I got sick. If God loved me, he wouldn't give me. If God loved, there would be no crime, there'd be no murders and rage. Right. No, this is Satan's world. God's not the enemy, he's the savior. He's the savior, exactly. And at the end of it, he's bringing everything in heaven that's, that's right. obedient and everything on earth that's under the blood back together again like that's it was exciting. from the beginning. That, that. Under the head of and Jesus Christ. Whole. That, to do whatever else he's going to do. That's in fact, if yes. you go back to the Bible and it mm -hmm. says in the beginning, right? And, and the word in the beginning is Bereshit. But Bereshit in Hebrew also means covenant. Oh, yes. So God that's had a covenant from the with beginning, man in the beginning. Us. Now he's restoring that covenant. That's wonderful. Through the blood of Yeshua. That's wonderful. Yeah. And, you know, I, I wanted to ask you, uh, of course, you know, we had started talking about the Chaldean spirit. And then we had said, uh, said in an, another program about, about um, how some of these uh, uh, holy sites in Israel, that um, they were, they're not the, 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 the correct ones, you know, because... Not because I say so, no, because the Bible says so. The Bible so. Says, says so. But, but, I mean, through your research, through, through Bible, through experts, through archaeology and everything, you, you know, you have, you and, and others have discovered those actual sites, and one of them is uh, Golgotha, right? So, so talk about that. Now, you, you think about Golgotha, the greatest gift given to mankind. Yeshua dies on the tree on the cross for our sins. He rises on the third day. And what we read in the Bible is the place of the skull. What does that mean? That's all it says. That's, that's all it says. Golgotha. What does that mean? The greatest gift given to mankind, and that's all we have, the skull mm -hmm. or Golgotha? Well, first of all, there's a clue over there because the word Golgatha in Hebrew means Goliath's head. Mm. From the word Galgolet, which means a skull. So it does mean the place of a skull, skull but then you don't know whose skull until you look at the Hebrew and you understand it's Goliath's skull. Okay. Now we know that the place of the crucifixion happened where David took Goliath's skull. Well, what was the picture of David chopping up Goliath's head? It was a picture of Yeshua crushing Satan That's on the right. cross once and for all, the demonic realm. That's right. And so now, I believe based on research, based on the Bible, it was the Mount of Olives. Why do I say that? Okay. Because the Bible says that David took Goliath's head where? To Yerushalayim, to Jerusalem. That's right. Where did he take it? He took it to the Mount of Olives. How do we know that? Because later on, Absalom is, is chasing after David. after David, mm -hmm. That's right. and he goes up to the Mount of Olives, Nob, and he asks the priest, "Do you have a weapon?" Mm -hmm. What does the priest say? "I've yes. got the sword here That's right. of Goliath." That you, of Goliath. That's That's right. Now, That's if he right. took the sword up there, he also took the head up there, and now we get a bigger picture that the place of the skull is Golgotha. It's on the Mount of Olives, and I'll tell you what, Mary, uh, Maria, one day when they dig up over there, they're going to find the skull. <laughs> Goliath yeah, skull. I mean, and so, so we get that picture. You mentioned another Bible verse in the beginning. Uh, what was it? Isaiah 40, 45, verse 3. The riches of the world. Uh, so that picture is actually speaking about also the, the account of, uh, of, ki of King David when he chopped off his head, or David. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it says they plundered the camp. The hidden treasures. Yeah. The hidden treasures. And so we see in Egypt, the blood of the lamb being put on the uh, doorposts, on the lintels. Israel takes the plunder of Egypt. David takes the plunder of the Philistines. And so God is going to enable the body of Yeshua to take the plunder of this world in order what? To buy a Ferrari? No. <laughs> in order to bring the gospel back to Jerusalem and go home. That's what it's speaking about. Amen. And so everything that was will happen again. So we know for a fact it's on the Mount of Olives. It's not. Now the biblical sites or the ones that the tourists take, most of them, mm -hmm. uh, and I've got no problem with the uh, with the garden tomb. I believe that you know the, the Holy Spirit's there. I, I go right. there to pray also, but I don't think that's the place of the skull. No, it's not. Why? Mm -hmm. Number one, it doesn't match, and I get all in detail in you the do. book. You do. You do. And there's and it's all backed up by scholars. This is not something new. Scholars have seen it, mm -hmm. even in the 1800s, and so the question has to be asked. The first question that I asked was: Is God going to use something against His word to reveal His word? And the answer is no. And the Bible right. says, thou That's shall not have any other gods than me, not any That's images. Right. That's right. So how is God going to use an image of a skull in a cave for his crucifixion site? That's right. Impossible. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. And so he's not going to do it. So we already know that that site is not the correct site. Based on the Bible, that's West Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. He's crucified on East Jerusalem. Doesn't match that either. 
And so I get everything in detail. And so most of the Christian sites go to the Garden Tomb. And so what do... Um, yes, that's the, the Chaldean spirit blinding the, the body of Yeshua. And so the, the Israelis, I mean, since they've studied, you know, Scripture and, I mean, not, not that they associated with, with Jesus, but, but at the same time, they probably think that Christians that visit are Meshuggah, right? <laughs> to, to, uh, absolutely. To, I mean, I was to. one of them. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I was one of them. He sat around you, uttering that word all the time. Yeah. <laughs> you have, when they see the, the Christians flocking to these sites, to these places, they laugh because they, the Jewish people, even before Yeshua, they knew where the place of the skull was. How come the Bible doesn't, doesn't give you an illustration? Think because the that. Jews knew about it. Think about they that. knew the place was the skull. It was like me telling you the airport here. Do you know where the airport is? <laughs> it's the same thing. Yeah. So the Jews knew where the place of the skull was. Uh, and that's so, why the New Testament just says they took him to the place of the skull. It was known. It wasn't, yeah. it wasn't any hidden. skull. It was the skull. The skull. It the was skull who? Of their heritage. They're very happy that Goliath's head was chopped off. They knew where it was. Right. Uh, oh, wow. They didn't understand the prophetic picture right. that we understand today, but they knew where it was. Wow. And think of David. I'm sorry. Were you going to say something? No, I, I was just going to ask you about also the uh, the birth of Jesus. And, th and this is where, where most of the mocking comes in. Because number one, they knew where the place of the skull is. Mm -hmm. And so when they see the Christians going to the other place and saying, oh, this is the Messiah, and this, they laugh. They mock it. They say they don't know what they're talking about. The Messiah cannot, I mean, the place of the skull is not over there. The place of the skull is the Mount of Olives. They know where it is. Right, right, right. And so... The, the birth of Yeshua. Mm -hmm. Most of the birth uh, places of Yeshua, we have the uh, Viva de la Rose place. We have the, and there's a whole uh, documentation in the Bible that I saw a demon in that place and uh, the church the church of uh, Holy Sepulchre. There's nothing mm -hmm. holy over there. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's the, I call it the church of the demonic sepulchre. Really? That's what, that's really? what it can be called. Now, now I mean, I, I know a uh, an archeologist that's Israeli and he was saying that that's a pretty close place, that it's it's highly likely, but you're saying no. I've got According documentation over there that, that the, the revelation of that church is way after the time of Yeshua. It doesn't match the location. It doesn't, doesn't match, match the, the Bible. It doesn't mm. match the scriptures. And so that's not the place. The mm. Bible reveals it to us. And so, I mean, these are times that all of this is being revealed, but, but okay, so of, co of course, very sincere, People go to those places; they enjoy them. Well, I'm not what, saying they're not sincere. The, the Christians right, right, they love right, Israel, right? But but what would you say to them? I mean, uh, you, you know, we don't want we, with the Holy, like you were saying, the Holy Spirit is everywhere. If if we're, they were believers, because we carry Him, but it is we should know truth. Search the scriptures. Scri search Test history. everything. Don't believe everything tells you. Yeah. People tell you, don't follow the crowds. Yes, His yes. book is very gracious in the yes, presentation it, it of all really of this. It, it really is. It really is. does not trash those sites. He just right. says, look. This is it. This yeah, is I, it. we know people have been going there, but the Word of God tells us. And, you know, Golgotha, the, the, the skull of Goliath, and, and, and then you've got the Old Testament saying he cut off his head. He took the skull and the sword to Jerusalem. Uh, you, the Mount of Olives is Jerusalem. It's, it's, it's the highest spot in Jerusalem. It's 200 feet higher than any of the other mountaintops, including Moriah. Yes. And, and then it says he goes up to the priest of Nob because his son is following him to kill him. And that's a picture. Think of this, Maria. It says in the Bible, in the Old Testament, he goes up mm -hmm. the Mount of Olives mm -hmm. weeping. Yes. Weeping, going to an altar, going to get some kind of God, why have you forsaken me? Yes. Okay? And the priest is there. And then he gets up, he's getting ready to leave, he says, I need a sword. Well, the sword of Goliath is here, which means that's where the skull <laughs> that's right. is too. It's exactly, yeah. So he gets the sword and he goes, All right, but now watch. Why is he weeping? Because someone has betrayed him. He's a picture of Jesus going up the, the hill. Why? Because Judas betrayed him. What's that right. a picture? It goes all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Satan, who is the first and the most beautiful, created being of the Lord, yes. the child of the Lord, the son of God, B'nai Elohim, the first one. That's right. He's betrayed his father, his creator. God yes. is weeping in the garden. He says, now I'm going to have to bring death. And I, 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 through the womb of a woman, your kingdom's over. Wow. God didn't hate Satan. He hated the sin. He hated the choice he made. Right. And it broke his heart, which is why at the Lord's Supper, when Judas gets up, Jesus said, go do what you're going to do. 
and then he tells the disciples Satan has entered into him. That is just And Judas beautiful. delivers him to the cross on the Mount of Olives. And, and you know, you write this this book, yeah, Glimpses you, you, of Glory. It's like, it's like, like, like that, right? It's like a novel. You, you're there. The two books go, ha go back to back, I mean, how are yeah. next to each other. Yeah. yeah, Glimpses of Glory is written like a novel, like it's like no other book I've ever written, in that it takes from the Garden of Eden to the death of John the Revelator. Yes. After he's been given the revelation, you're with him when he dies and enters into the portal in the realm of, of glory. So from the Garden of Eden to the realm of glory with John the Revelator, everything in, you're on the boat with Noah, you're, you're, on, you're in the garden with Adam and Eve and Satan, you get to experience all of that. And, and so the whole book is written that way. And, wow. and every bit of it's footnoted so that you can read what scholars say, in case people disagree with me yeah. when I say this happened here. And no, the Bible doesn't say that. You follow the footnote. You'll see where the Bible does say it, Pointed, and yes. scholars back it up. You just didn't read it correctly. That's that's awesome. And I mean, Goliath. Yes. Okay, go, uh, the word Goliath in Hebrew is uh, Goliath is a Philistine. What's Philistine? A Philistine in Hebrew is a invader, an occupier. And mm. so, as you see, the Chaldean spirit occupying right. territory, 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 territory that doesn't belong to him, and he gets his head cut off, territory. place the skull, Golgatha's. But and you so, know, it's like well, what Scripture tells us that. We have authority over, you know, the, Satan really. So if we're, we can't, we can't fear. We just have to know that God is in control, yep. and we yep. just have to do what He has called us to do, Amen. and say, you know, this, it, it, His time is short. The enemy's time is short, right. and Revelation so just, 12, 12. and so just keep on praying for, for, for souls, because that's what the Lord wants us to have more in the kingdom, and that's what you, both of you, are doing, going out and and. Um, preaching God's Word in a very fascinating way. But, you know, wh one last thing I wanted to talk about this book is, what were you hoping to, what, what are you hoping that the readers get out of this, this book? Knowing God's master plan for the end times, knowing the enemy's plan and unmasking it, preparing and equipping the church or the body of Yeshua for the end times, for the second coming, and to be ambassadors for the kingdom. Yes. And to know how to pray for Israel because you are Israel. Amen. Yes. You, I, you know, I'm glad you said that because a lot of people, when they say, you know, pray for Israel, they don't count themselves in. But you're absolutely right. We are you're spiritual Israel. Right. We are children, grafted children, in, children, into the vine. You know, the famous Bible passage, Psalms 122, verse 6. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. They shall prosper that love thee. Well, love thee in Hebrew cannot refer to a city. It refers to a person. So it's speaking about Yeshua. Yeshua. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem, they shall prosper they, those that love me. Because Yeshua beautiful. is equalizing himself with Jerusalem. Second Chronicles 6, 6, Jerusalem, the place where I put my name. He is Jerusalem. Wow. So he's telling you, if you love me, you pray for Jerusalem. Another thing is in the Hebrew, where it says pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the word peace is capitalized in Hebrew on the original Torah scroll. Why? Because he is the Prince of Peace, yes. Isaiah 9, 6. And he's telling you, the gospel went to the nations so you can get salvation. Amen. The Jews missed his first coming mm -hmm. and some of the nations. Now it's time to make sure that they don't miss his second, second coming, coming before it's too late. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. That doesn't mean you pray for a nation to sign documents of, of peace. for That's temporary. It means pray for the real peace, the, peace, the, salvation, the salvation of, of Israel. That's Amen. That's about. awesome. And so I wanted to also mention this book, and I know our time is running short again, but your book, Yeshua Protocol, I mean, you talk about DNA, you talk about advancements in science. Science, you, geography, you, you, archaeology, you, oh the my, Bible, it's all you, related to the Bible. You, I mean, this is just amazing, and so I can't wait to, to get Thank to this. And so and we don't have that much time, but I wanted you to explain how Yeshua code, how he is embedded in our okay. DNA. How much time do we have? Uh, we have about uh, about two or three minutes. <laughs> okay, then I'll give my two or three minute answer. Okay. <laughs> the Yeshua code, the Yeshua protocol, uh, protocol of course means a set of accepted rules, okay? There's medical protocol, military protocol, etc. Well, Yeshua has a protocol. You're going to come to his word. He's got mysteries, but he's going to reveal them in his proper time. And so what I'm trying to show folks is how that works and, and how Jesus used that language. Paul used that language. Daniel used that language. Mm. And so then I'm saying, now let's us, we know we're living in the most prophetic time since Jesus. So we know we're in the last days. I don't set dates, but we're, there. Sure. we're getting there. So, so let's, let's, let's look. And so what I do is 
is I take you through all these realms of science and astronomy and archaeology and history, but it all keeps coming back to scriptures. Multidimensional. <laughs> Multidimensions, uh, right down to our DNA, right down to quantum physics, the particles of quantum physics. Yes. The signature of God is on them all. And in the Word, right in plain text, all we need is the plain text to lead us to Christ and to live for Him. But if you know that in the dimensional realm, underneath the plain text is even more revelation, and then, then that's what Paul says, look, I'm going to tell you the mystery. And you go back and read it, and that's what he was talking about. It, it, just like the word Yeshua means is, is salvation in English. But everywhere you go through the Old Testament, wherever you find the word salvation, it's always connected to God. The Lord Yahweh is my light and, and my, my Yeshua. Oh, my Yeshua. My See, awesome, it's all through the scriptures. And beautiful. so I, I delve into all of that. So that Yeshua has a protocol. We're revealing everywhere God has literally put his name. Old Testament, New Testament, quantum mechanics, DNA, science, archaeology, geography. That's awesome. And that's the gospel, and that's the feasts. That's, the fe that's awesome. Now, um, Rabbi, can I ask you to bless us with the uh, ironic blessing, if you can yeah. just look into the camera, because we know that that's a very, very powerful. Numbers chapter 6, verse 24 to 26. It's the blessing giving, given uh, to the, from the high priest to us. In Hebrew, it's not a corporal blessing, it's an individual blessing, meaning that God is coming to each one of you and blessing you one by one. May the Lord bless you, and may the Lord keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmarecha. Ya'er Adonai panavelecha v'yichunecha. Isa. Adonai panavelecha v'yasem lecha shalom. In Yeshua's name, amen. 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 That, oh, wow. I felt yes. that in my DNA. Yeah, uh, you're uh, supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so thank much. You I mean, the, the, this was great. Next time you're in town, let me know ahead of time. We, we, we will. We <laughs> and will. And we'll do something special. So thank Thanks. you. And God bless everyone for watching our program. You know, today is the day of salvation, friends, and so... In if Hebrew, you, today is the day of Yeshua. Of Yeshua, that's yes. it. Yes. So if you want more information about my program, please contact me at mariagoldstein7 at gmail.com. Check out my website, www.voicesinthewildernesstv. Until next time, we wish you good health, success, and spiritual growth. Remember, today is the day of Yeshua. And so keep on watching these great four episodes, and so... Um, just uh, check out my, my website and uh, follow us, and, and uh, you will be super blessed. Shalom, shalom, shalom. Shalom, shalom. God bless you. God bless you. Salvation, this is a call for salvation. If you do not know Jesus, this is a call for salvation. The call for salvation, respond to the call for salvation. If you don't know the Savior, this is his presentation. Who hath ascended up into heaven? or descended. Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou canst tell. Proverbs 34 The Mystery of the Hebrew Letters Jesus Revealed by Rev. Dr. Maria Goldstein is available now in bookstores everywhere.